Um, so, uh, Brian Granderson, I'm the senior lecturer here on the professional policing degree, um, the policing and intelligence degree, and also um, in criminology. So, one of the benefits of coming to the University of Wolverhampton to study policing is it's done for the professional policing degree. So, you really only have to focus on the, the, the law content and some process content. Uh, and by doing that, it allows you to achieve the maximum grade that you can without the fog of war about learning how to be a police officer at the same time. And uh, it then gives you access to um, uh, volunteer policing through special constabulary to put all of what we learn into context, but at a pace that suits you over the course of your three years. So going to a university that is licensed to deliver the professional policing degree allows you subject to the application process to join a force, uh, to not have to do any more study unless you choose to. If you, you can still join the police service, um, what they call the degree holder route, with a non-professional policing degree, but as part of your um, learning to be a police officer, you've still got to go and do a postgraduate professional diploma in policing um, to put in place all the things that people have learned from doing three years in the professional policing degree. And we're quite lucky. We're getting a growing number of people that are recognising actually coming to the University of Wolverhampton adds value from the way that it's taught, the experience of the lecturers that are in there, our engagement with policing and having guest speakers from various forces and actually going out and looking within the forces within the region at how they operate. We've got three core lecturers, so uh, there's myself, um, there is Sally Kearney who comes with 15 years worth of policing experience. Um, her experiences from operational policing, um, road traffic through to um, uh, vulnerability and safeguarding uh, and she left the police after about 15 years and took that safeguarding experience to work within the wider criminal justice system uh, and um, has operated um, safeguarding principles as well as policing principles across the broader public sector. So she brings a wealth of experience not only in that area um, but her policing experience as well. Uh, and then we have Dr John McDaniel who um, has been delivering a policing degree within U uh, the University of Wolverhampton for probably eight to ten years, uh, a policing and intelligence degree with some variations on that if you want to do a forensic pathway. And um, that degree is aimed at people who know, definitely don't want to be a police officer, don't want to be exposed to all that guns, knives, drugs, but I want to get involved in the investigative process or the forensic process or the, the wider policing support family, the things that happen behind the scene, whether that be computer-based um, analysis, whether that's about supporting operational officers but behind the scenes, uh, that's where the policing intelligence uh, degree comes in. And it opens other pathways through to the National Crime Agency, uh, the Security Services, GCHQ, a whole raft of other organisations who do a policing function uh, just wearing a different set of clothing. Um, and John's been engaged with that, as I said, for about eight to ten years and his experience around the wider depth of criminology uh, and the breadth across the public sector is invaluable, as well as negotiating the academic hierarchy around delivering um, such courses and ensuring that we have that academic rigour around what we're actually doing. Just thinking about the teaching methodologies that we use and that's quite important uh, because it is combinations of lect uh, uh, lectures it isn't a vocational degree, it's very much an academic degree, but the practical insight, the, the hanger, if you like, to hang that theory onto comes from the experience of the team. And we also, especially where we feel the challenges are around understanding diversity, inclusion and engagement, uh, we make sure we go out to communities or bring communities in. And that's the feedback we get both from students and uh, from the communities we engage with, and that's invaluable to recognise that this isn't just about people that call for service, this is about people that are there, that need you, that need to know you're there, uh, but don't know unless you go and say hi.